Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm kind of excited today because uh, my guest is in Calgary and he is a radio host. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas Coxworth. Coxworth, right, there we go. <laughs> Welcome, Thomas. Just, just, you can call me, hey, you, you can call me, hey, buddy, you know. Okay. And I, I will answer to all of that. Okay, hey, you, buddy. <laughs> so um, tell me about your radio show that you host. Uh, I have been doing radio for 35, 38 years. Uh, I got involved through the Folk Festival and through the Roots Music Organizations that I belong to, Roots as in uh, R-O-O-T-S, Roots Acoustic Music. It can be a, a variety of genres. And um, about 1985-ish, kind of around there, before that, uh, I... I started on CGSR in Edmonton. And then in 1995, uh, I was asked to put a program together for the CKUA radio network. It is the oldest radio network in Canada, 10 years older than CBC. Right. Uh, and so 1927 is when it was uh, first launched as an educational service. And uh, we reach, CKUA reaches uh, the entire province and into Montana and uh, the borders of BC and Saskatchewan. So, and, and quite frankly, now uh, throughout the world. So um, I have always been obsessed with uh, music and I've more or less followed the roots music scene, which can be Celtic music. It can be gospel music. It's acoustic oriented. It's English traditional uh, singer-songwriter, a lot of singer-songwriter stuff. Um, we have uh, an amazing uh, group of artists in Canada, so there's a lot of Canadian focus within the program. And uh, I've been a massive collector of music for, well, <laughs> since the Beatles. Since the Beatles. So, so, uh, so the program is two hours every Sunday morning at uh, from 10 till noon Rocky Mountain time. And I'd like to think that I've found a place and a space and a, and, and a, a very uh, dedicated audience that uh, likes to be part of it. So I hear from them on a regular basis. Oh, I'm, I made a mistake. I said you were in Calgary. I am in Calgary. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> so CKUA is, uh, is, is a provincial broadcaster. Oh, all right. The CK is one call letters, UA, U of A is where it started in 1927. Uh, so, but I am in Calgary and I produce the program from my studios here. Right, now I, I was able to listen to, I had a bit of time last week and, and I was able to listen to it for about half an hour or so. And um, it's really, really nice music. Nice music, okay. I, I, will, I will accept nice music. I like I it, well. <laughs> not, not a good word choice, but no. Well, I'm, it, it, it's music that has content in it, um, yes. and, and I try to guide uh, through the various genres. Each week, it's very, very different, uh, but it does focus a lot on singer-songwriters because in, in what I've been involved in, uh, whether it's uh, traditional music that goes back hundreds of years or, or very contemporary music that was just written this past week, um, it, it's a songwriter that's at the root of it. And uh, I like to say there's a lot of cover music because if you're covering a song from the 1700s or 1800s, well, guess what? You're, you're covering a song. So, and I, I like popular music as well. So an acoustic roots person covering uh, a Beatles song is, is very appropriate or Pink Floyd or Black Sabbath. So. Okay. I should have said, I like the music. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. I, I, I'm very conscious uh, that... If, if I was to do a, a truly traditional uh, folk radio show, that uh, there may be some listeners that would get restless and would not want to um, have me dialogue about something from the 1930s or 40s on the scratchy 78s. Uh, so I'm very conscious of, of, of demonstrating the music's origin and, and how contemporary it can be today. And, and many young artists, and, and let me just conservatively say, uh, 
uh, under the 30, uh, 35 or so are really still investigating uh, traditional music. So it makes it very contemporary. Right, yeah. I really like it when, um, when you, like as you do, talk about the music, you know, talk about the origins of it or who these artists are. I appreciate that rather than just hearing the music. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like to, I like to set up the stories. Um, the artist goes to great length to uh, uh, sometimes it's a two minute song. Um, my friend David Francie has a song called Torn Screen Door. It's two minutes and it tells an entire life story in that two minutes. And then um, there's other artists like Jackie Levin that'll take eight minutes to sell, tell a story, but it's how intricate they want to make it. Right. And if I set it up properly, and, and then the listener uh, will will probably sing along with the chorus, but they'll also get more engaged with the, the lyrics. They'll also hear the story. And then I also encourage people to uh, go outside of the program. And uh, these days, you can certainly listen online to just about anything that you're looking for. Yeah, right. I mean, I personally, I love all types of music, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, although I do have my preferences, but as most people do. Do you now? You talked about your guitars. Are 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 you a performer? A very bad one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I uh, I should never go into the studio, and uh, never uh, will I ever go on stage and uh, and and play guitar. But I, I love the the stringed instruments. I love guitars, and they've been um, just a source of comfort for me. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to hang out with people who are world-renowned, world-renowned instrumentalists, world-renowned uh, players and, and writers and things like that. So it's, it's, it's very intimidating for me to think that I could even throw a little shadow uh, on the stage, but I, I do a lot of MC work and I'm quite happy with that. And uh, I like setting up an artist uh, before they go on stage. I like to bring them out on stage with uh, with uh, energy and draw the energy to me and then ladies and gentlemen and then have them start to play so that's one of the things that I, I contribute to outside of the radio program. Nice now how do you get the artists to feature on the show like do they come to you are you reaching out to them is that a combination of? It, it is a combination of uh, I have reached out to Bob Dylan and he's never even responded. What's the matter with him? I know, I know. Well, you know, one of these days it just may drop at the right time and then I'll panic and have to do something. I, I'm very fortunate and, and, and uh, I've been involved. I started with the Edmonton Folk Festival about 1979. Right. So through that, I've been very fortunate uh, to know many of the artists that, uh, that are invited to the various festivals. Hmm. And I also know the publicists and by connection, um, I can call somebody up and say, do you have time? And uh, we can hook up on Zoom or Skype right. or do a phone interview or whatever. Most of the artists I deal with are, are very pleased that somebody is supporting their music. They're, they're very happy that, that there's a caring uh, group out there and my listeners really, really care. And there's artists that uh, wouldn't come to the province without spending a few minutes on the air. Oh, um, that's so nice. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. I, I think it's really important. Um, many of the artists, uh, as I said, are world renowned, but that's in a very small corner of the world. You know, mm -hmm. they can travel the world and share their music and share their expertise and share their songs and share their stories. Uh, but uh, uh, Rihanna isn't, isn't going to be a real competition for them. Neither is Jennifer Lopez. So they don't get that uh, type of focus. But uh, in Alberta, for example, we have 60, possibly 70 folk clubs. So an artist can come, come into the province and uh, Edmonton, Calgary, Drumheller, uh, uh, Red Deer, uh, uh, Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, you know, uh, they, can, they can tour and, and spend a week here and reach a um, thousand fifteen hundred people easily and and they like that and and the the audience because ckua covers the entire province the, the they get up on stage and the audience already knows them so i'm really quite proud of that that, that we can say that when when we support an artist and they can come into town and, and play to a, a sold out audience 
I think that's wonderful. Yeah. So is radio something you always, always want to do? Yes. <laughs> I, 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 um, and, and I hesitate to date myself, but uh, obviously if people are looking, there's snow on the rooftop here. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm in my early 50s. I'm lying. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it was the early part of the 60s uh, when, when uh, the Beatles came along and I became obsessed with music. I don't know why. Um, I All of a sudden music was uh, spoke to me in so many ways from so many different uh, artists. And uh, I used to hear the DJs. I consider myself a producer. I'm, I might be a DJ, but I'm a producer. Okay. Uh, I, I used to hear the DJs uh, throwing 45s on of the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and the Dave Clark Five and Jerry and the Pacemakers. And, oh, I loved all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But there was never an opportunity for me, a uh, small town, Northern Ontario, uh, to, to get involved with that. And, and um, when I moved out West to uh, Edmonton, and now I live in Calgary, but to Edmonton um, with, with the job I was with at that time, um, I just wanted to be involved with music and through being involved and volunteering and, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it seemed to be the, the right time and, and some very, very important people who are still friends of mine today, people that are very passionate about uh, Celtic music and singer songwriters and English, Irish and Scottish music, uh, had a wonderful club. And for me, that's exactly where I needed to fit. And then as it happened, uh, 84, 85, somebody came along and said, you know something about music. And I was already writing for some magazines at that point, uh, okay. uh, specializing in roots music, of course. But um, uh, people came along and said, how would you like to do uh, a program or share a program on uh, CJSR? And then a friend helped me. And um, for better or for worse, <laughs> here I am today. Yeah. It, it, it's like anybody, I believe, that, and, and, and not only the listeners, people are very passionate about things as I am, and they're, they're very caring about uh, how good the music is, or how good the artist is, or how good the painting is, or how good the food is, or how good the, the wine is, right? And uh, I've, uh, with CKU, I have fallen into a, a, a province that reaches around the world um, with this, so... Yeah, I've always wanted to be in radio, and I don't want to get out of it right now. Um, it, it, it's difficult in these days to do what I think is a really good program. Yeah. Um, because you can no longer just say things, um, certainly over the last year and a half plus, uh, you have to be very careful of what's being said and what the listener is listening to, you know? Because yeah. you want, uh, I'm Sunday morning, and, and uh, so I don't rock out a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. The odd uh, Ashley McIsaac fiddle tune or, you know, some rock and folk maybe, but um, I, I keep it at, at kind of a Sunday morning pace. And right. People use the program, uh, they've told me, as their soundtrack. They like to glide into their morning, you know. And uh, so I've been very fortunate. I, you know, I got to say, it's, it's, uh, um, yeah, I've been very fortunate to do it. So. Right. That's nice. And the beautiful thing about music, it's a it's, uh, universal language, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, there's an artist by the name of David Franci, uh, Franci. and uh, David, uh, uh, sorry, I got, uh, Michael Franti, <laughs> Michael Franti, who, who travels the world and, and goes to war-torn areas with just his little guitar and starts singing right. and gets people on both sides of the borders to sing along to uh, the songs that everybody knows and he says it can break down walls and barriers and mm -hmm. you know you, you can't be angry at a person if you're singing along with them is, is his belief and yeah. and um, being a folky usually the artists are singing about uh, social equality and equal rights and mm -hmm. uh, indigenous rights and uh, lgbt to as spirit uh, rights and things like that so um I'd like to think that we at the, the festivals and in, in this type of music are are uh, very open. We're all together in it, you know? Yeah, very nice, yeah. I've even seen some, uh, I think it might have been post on Facebook where uh, somebody's playing, was it a piano? 
and there's a, a cows come over to listen, you know? So it even reaches animals, and I think that's awesome. I, I think um, music generally is not very threatening to uh, animals or uh, um, my dog Avalo doesn't like my guitar playing but that's more of a quality issue um, it's um, uh, people just feel very warm when they hear something that, that speaks to them and mm -hmm. uh, I, I love the Irish and Scots and Welsh, lang Welsh language um, and I don't really I, I, I'm better with Scots than I am with Irish and certainly uh, I, I don't understand Welsh very well, right. um, even even French or Spanish. Right. But a lot of music transcends the language. Right. And and the artist uh, will will put so much into that you your your heart just opens right up. So I I try uh, when I hear a good piece of music that I know is going to speak to people, um, I simply say, you know, I here's here's the story behind it and you can look up things online but just listen to it and they usually get it they usually want to join in so yeah that's nice yeah uh i listen to music all night long because i have that that ringing in my ears so my radio is always on about well, my my oh. alexa um yeah. unfortunately i can't get your station on alexa so, mm. oh she just turned on because i said her name <laughs> uh, but uh you know, normally I listen to CBC and they've changed some of their lineup and I'm so disappointed because um, I, don't, you, I don't know if you realize that on Saturday, there used to be, um, was it ap Apropos? And it was all, Apropos. Music, yes. right? I think it was hosted by Jim Co Corcoran. Corcoran. Yes, all music from Montreal and it was just so nice to hear that. And so I like, I like the idea of what you're doing too, you know, with that, that bringing something special that people can listen to whether it's like you know like i said whether it's me saturday night or you or people listening sunday morning it's really nice i think and it's it's great i mean it's nice because of what you're doing but it's great to be able to have to, to listen to that to be able to yeah. go there um yeah. judy ledbetter uh with pete seeger in in the 50s was asked you know well what's this folk music you know, who does folk music? He says, people does folk music because I ain't heard horses do it yet. And that was his classic line that has, um, you know, it's been attributed as well to Louis Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And that it, it's something that just speaks to people in, in, in lyric or melody or uh, instrumentation, you know, and, and artists, all artists, but the artists that I'm familiar with uh, on the program, they spend a lot of time you know, to, to put a song down. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I was listening to Bob Dylan uh, with a free form 18-minute uh, rant uh, earlier today. Right. And it's absolutely wonderful. But how long did that take him to do that? Yeah. And then yeah. um, some people can spend a, a few years just doing a two or three minute song. Right. You know, it's just depends on how they want to communicate. Yeah. And then when you have an artist like Dylan, for example, uh, people say, well, he doesn't sing like he used to, or it doesn't sound the same. Well, he's no longer the same, just like we're not the same. So he feels his music is 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 uh, set in one time and can transition uh, through time and be very, very different. And that can annoy people that just want to sing la di da all day long. You know? Right. Yes. Yes. That's unfortunate. I mean, yeah. he, he's allowed to evolve just like everybody else, right? He is allowed, yeah, and and uh, uh, that that is the dilemma. I, I, many of my friends have had songs that are um, anthems mm. that uh, they can't go on stage and do a, a thirty minute or forty five minute set without singing one, two, three, or four of those songs. Right. And and as good as those songs are, they have to. So let's say that song was. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, his name was Ron Hines. He's no longer with us. And he's had a song that was considered the unofficial national anthem of Newf Newfoundland. Okay. Uh, and it was called Sunny. And uh, he always had a hard time doing it because he thought once it got out with other people like Amy Lou Harris and Mary Black and, oh my goodness, uh, so many, so many artists have covered it as well. He felt that they did it better and it uh, really... He, he, he developed a thing that at the end of his performance, he would get the audience to sing along. And he would walk off the stage with everybody singing the chorus of Sonny, which was, which was quite magical. And the audience was happy and he was happy because 
he was he was truthfully getting bored. He was no longer in in that place anymore. Yeah. And and um, but the audience still was. The audience still wanted to go back to that place. And I think that's an artist's job is is uh, to own their history. Right. And uh, when when the audience is sitting out in front and they've paid money to sit there to hear their favorite song, you know. You, you, you get groups like Blue Rodeo, for example. Um, you know, how many albums have they done in their uh, close to 40 year career now, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and how how many songs are well known, you know? They can't go on stage and not do Try, which was their first major hit right. or, 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 or many other songs, so. Yeah, well, this has been great. This has been great, um, I'm, uh, we're out of time. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I've rambled on. No, 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 no. This is what you're supposed to do. I needed you to talk. That's what that's what interviews are about. If all you're hearing is me, then this, it's going wrong, <laughs> right? I, I agree with you. I agree with you. When I do interviews, I edit myself out and let the artist speak because that's where it comes from. It's, it's, it's truly their soul that I'm trying to put out there. Yeah, yeah. So what I'll do is I want you to stay on camera while I say goodbye to the audience, but I will include uh uh the 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 station that they can tune into uh i i went online to find it by the way because i couldn't listen to it on my alexa but i just okay. did get yeah. it online it wasn't a problem for that anyway <laughs> so yeah just stay there so thank you everybody for watching i hope you enjoyed listening to thomas uh cox Wars, what he had to say i hope you get a chance to listen to it the station, the music is, is really, really, really great. So, um, yeah, thanks, everybody, and take care, and peace out. Peace out. A sense of community, till the wax a place to be. A sense of community, where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley. Rolling through paradise with me It's multicultural You're sure to see it all Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see Come party in the park Go dancing after dark Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see